I want to thank the Auto Barn, Volkswagen, and Countryside. They made this video possible. So if you're in the market for a brand new or used Volkswagen, check them out. Their URL is on the screen and in the description below. Today I'm behind the wheel of a brand new 2021 Volkswagen Atlas. That's right, this is the 2021 model. Now, Volkswagen did release a 2020 model, but it was only out for maybe three months before they decided to introduce the new one. And some of you guys may have seen the preview videos because this was released during the Chicago Auto Show. Uh, there was a lot of coverage about it, but it's here. It is here and it came really quickly. So today, I'm gonna let you guys know how good this brand new Atlas is. The best way to think about this 2021 model is that it is a refresh and not a complete redesign. So there are a lot of things that were carried over, but there are a lot of things that have changed as well. Starting with the outside, the front fascia, the front end and the rear has been redesigned. It's much more fresh, more modern, more sleek, and it's in line with the Atlas Crossport, which is a really beautiful looking SUV. I already reviewed that earlier and I think that's a really good two-door, basically, version of the Atlas. Now, this one doesn't look identical, but it's pretty darn close. Now, this one I'm driving is in the middle of the pack in terms of trim levels. This is the SEL with four motion, meaning four-wheel drive. It is not the top. There is the SEL Premium. That is the top trim level that you can get, which pretty much gets you everything. Then you have the R line, which is a little bit below that, but that's more for um, appearance and definitely does look good. And then you have the SEL. So this is right in the middle. This is the trim level that a lot of you guys will be looking at because it does come well equipped with a lot of features. Now, because of the new front end and new rear end, this Atlas actually increased in length about two to three inches, which makes this one of the biggest in this class and you could definitely feel it inside. There is so much room in here. I reviewed the Honda Pilot recently, which is one of the biggest in the class. I reviewed the Palisade and Telluride before, which are also big behemoth SUVs. This, to me, is the biggest. Honestly, the amount of room in here, the cargo room, passenger room, this has to rival some full-size SUVs out there. It's just not as tall. Let's start with the trunk. Take a look behind the third row. You get a good amount of space. There's a couple of cubby holes on the side. Decent amount, but if you do have the privacy cover underneath, it kind of blocks the space a little bit. But if you open up the bottom cover, you'll see that you can hide your privacy cover. Also, you have your tools and spare tire and so forth. Of course, if that's not enough space, simply fold down the third row and you'll see you get a lot of room after doing so. And you can also fold down the second row if you wanted to, if you wanted even more space. What about the third row seat? One of the biggest in this class. Now, to get in the third row, you can move in between the captain chairs, which are optional, but highly recommended. There is plenty of space in between the captain chairs for adults to move in. But if you didn't want to do that, you can fold these captain chairs up pretty easily. There's a lever on top, you pull on it, the seat folds forward. And also what I like is, I don't think a lot of people pay attention to this, is the step in height. The step in height to get in is actually a little bit lower. I would say at least a few inches lower than others in this class, which makes it very easy to get into the third row. Once I'm back there, it's very comfortable. I moved the seat up just a few inches and you could see I have plenty of leg room, at least a couple inches and it doesn't really affect the leg room in the second row. And there's plenty of headroom, but on this SEL trim, you don't get much back there. You get a couple cup holders, some storage spaces, vents, and that's pretty much it. No USB ports or anything like that, no shades. Now, moving on to the second row, there's enormous amount of space, enormous. I have probably six to eight inches of leg room and I'm five feet 10 equal amount probably in headroom. There's a lot of room, shoulder room, hip room, not a problem. Now for the second row passengers, you do get quite a bit. You get sunshades, also climate control, and plenty of ports, USB ports and regular household outlet. Also, you do get a panoramic sunroof, which is really nice. It stretches all the way to the second row, lets a lot of light in. I'm a big fan of it. 
Now, there's one thing I think Volkswagen didn't really think about, and that is families tend to drink a lot and have a lot of drinks. Most SUVs in the three row segment have a ton of cup holders. For example, the Subaru Ascent actually has 19 in total. That tells you how important cup holders are. And there's not a lot in this Atlas. In the second row, usually there's a pair, either by the climate control or by the seat. Nothing, there's nothing. You get one small one in the door panel on each side and that's it. And it's really shallow. So you don't get a lot of cup holders, which is kind of strange. Now moving out front, the space is just as significant. You can see so much headroom, shoulder room, hip room, plenty of it. It is so wide that I'm nowhere near reaching this door. Like all the way like this, I still haven't reached that door. This is a wide, wide SUV. So in terms of space, you are gonna get plenty of it, plenty of it. Besides the space, in terms of the cabin, this is very familiar. It looks ex almost identical to the one in the Atlas Crossboard, also in the other Volkswagens I reviewed recently. This is a all business cabin, meaning there's basically zero colors. <laughs> Everything is dark, 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 and dark. Uh, there is some contrast with some silver, but otherwise it's dark wood dark leather, dark everything, okay? And you know what? For some of you guys, this will be appealing. This digital cockpit that you get in here. This is a very large digital cockpit, it replaces your whole gauge cluster, and it's nice. It's definitely nice. There's a lot of views, so you can scroll through a variety of views and get a lot of info. Basically, you customize that however you want. This is one of the best that I've seen in this segment. The counterpart to this is this eight inch infotainment screen, which is one of the best in the industry. It can actually predict your movement. Like as you can see here, before I even touch the screen, you can see it's anticipating that I'm gonna to be touching the screen. That is really out there. I haven't seen any other infotainment screen that could do that. Whether that's really useful, I don't know, but it does do it and it's really cool. It's a cool parlor trick you can show people while chauffeuring them around. But this interface, really easy to use. It's very bright, really responsive. And if you go into the settings, there's a ton of things you can change about your lights, your wipers, your safety features. There's everything, everything is configurable. This is one of the best that I've used and uh, I really like it. Now underneath the climate control, this is pretty simple. Uh, you do get heated seats, not ventilated seats in here. You also don't get heated steering wheel, but you get everything else. It's tri-zone in here. It's pretty self-explanatory. There's a big knob in the middle with the auto button that you press and on the side, you can adjust the temperature. So that's pretty, pretty easy. Underneath, you do get wireless charging in here, which is nice. If your phone is compatible, you could use that. You got additional uh, USB ports and another port down there and just overall good amount of space to put whatever you want. Also on top in this SEL, you get this panoramic sunroof, which you see in a lot of cars, but what I love about Volkswagens is the cover is see-through, it's transparent. So even though when it's closed, it still lets some light in, which is really nice. I like that a lot. Okay, so just tested the, the acceleration. I was about 20 to 60, and I did have the Atlas in sport mode. When I put it in sport mode, I could definitely tell. It's, it's a big difference between sport and normal. You feel the throttle go up more. It does hold the gear um, longer, so it makes a big difference. But overall, zero to 60, not bad. That's about the same. I would say actually felt maybe a little bit quicker than some of the others I've tested recently. Um, this is utilizing a V6 that's pushing about 276 horsepower and torque is around 266 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you compare that to the competition, that is down. Most in this class are pushing 280, 290, 300 horsepower. So if you look at it that way, it is down on power, however, because of the eight-speed transmission and the way Volkswagen have geared this Atlas, 
it doesn't feel any slower. Now, even though this is the V6, you can also get a four cylinder, which some of you guys will laugh at. You get a 235 horsepower turbo four cylinder, but the good thing about that four cylinder is it's turbocharged. So most of that torque comes in very early on in the power band. So the cross board that I, that I tested actually utilized a four cylinder and it did not feel slow at all. It felt actually pretty good. So in case you're wondering if you should go with a V6 or if you know the four cylinder is enough, give it a try. I think you'll be surprised. And for this 2021 model, you can now get all wheel drive equipped or four motion, I should say, equipped with a four cylinder. Before, you couldn't get that. You can choose that now. Also keep fuel economy in mind when deciding between the two engines. The V6 with 4 motion only gets a combined EPA of 18 miles per gallon versus 22 for the 4 cylinder 2 liter turbo engine. In either form, the miles per gallon is lacking compared to the competition, but at least the 4 cylinder is a tad better. As for suspension, I'm on a real rough patch right now on this freeway. You guys can see it. This is uh, pretty bad and the suspension is actually pretty good. It's soaking up these bumps quite well. Now the steering on the other hand, I'm a little disappointed. It's way too light and it's too, um, there's too much play in it. So take a look at the steering wheel. This is a lot of movement, okay? And the, and the Atlas is really not registering. So there's a lot of play, so it makes you feel like it's kind of dull. One thing I'm a little disappointed by is this whole interior is covered in leather at, and not leather. Now, on the lower trims, I could see how, you know, cloth or leather, that makes sense. But, um, but in terms of this price range, this is coming in around $45,000. And for this price range, I just don't think you should have leatherette. I think you should have real leather. Now, besides the leatherette, the seats itself are actually pretty nice. I think this driver's seat right now has good bolsterings holding me in without being uncomfortable. The bottom cushion is nice and big. I think the seats are actually pretty nice. In the second row too, I felt like the second row and even in the third row, they weren't just like flat. They actually had a contour and it actually felt pretty good. So I think the seats themselves are quite nice. One other small change that I didn't even know about until I read about is that the logo, the Volkswagen logo has changed. So on the steering wheel, it looks different now. And if you look at the back, also different. Just a really subtle change. I don't know why Volkswagen needed to change their logo, but they did. So just the FYI. So because this is equipped with four motion, you actually get drive mode. So there's a drive mode selector here and there's four places you could select, but there's actually more than four. So on the very left, you have snow, then you have normal, then you have off-road and off-road custom. Now, when you select normal on the screen, there's more things you could select. You could select eco, normal or sport and then if you go to off-road custom let's say you can adjust however you want you can adjust the suspension steering throttle some sport some not i mean there's a lot of things you can select so even though on the drive mode selector there's only four modes there's actually a lot more than four overall cabin is quiet it's really quiet volkswagen did a good job with installation you really don't hear much even at high speeds cars passing by road noise, wind noise, basically nothing. So it's a really quiet ride in here. In terms of driving position and visibility, really good, really good. You definitely sit high up, not as high as some of the other three row SUVs, but high enough. You do get a good commanding view. The windshield, side windows, the side windows, the, the door panels are quite low, so you could see well past your sides. Also the back window, nice and big. The only exception is when you have the headrest up from the third row, they do block the rear visibility quite a bit. But if you have them down, absolutely no problem. But overall, visibility in here is quite good and driving position is quite good as well. If you're in a market for a large three row SUV to haul the family around and you're wondering if this is a right SUV for you, I would say definitely give it a look. Give it a drive because after this review, I'm pleasantly surprised by this brand new Atlas. I think it's definitely a contender. 
So next, let me sum up the good and bad for you so you can decide if this is the right SUV for you. As for the good, the 2021 Atlas has a fresh new exterior look. You get an enormous cabin with a ton of space within. There's a great digital cockpit and infotainment combo. You get very easy access to the third row. There's a quiet cabin and a comfortable ride. And there's many drive modes to choose from with custom adjustments. As for the bad, you get below fuel economy with the V6. The Atlas lacks cup holders. The steering feels vague and dull. Leatherette seat covers seem to be out of place for this price range and the Atlas could be too big for some. Overall, I'm giving this brand new Atlas a score 97. To see how it ranks among its peers, check out driversonlyrankings.com. As for pricing, the very base Atlas with a four-cylinder front-wheel drive variant comes in around $31,545, and then you go up from there. The very top of the line V6 4Motion SEL Premium tops out around $49,000. Now today, I'm driving the SEL with the V6 4Motion, also with captain chairs, which is an extra $700, so it's coming in right around $45,000. Thanks for watching. Hit the like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future reviews, first looks, or news.